Hi, my name is Stacy Moraney Jr. This is another episode of People You Should Know. Um, Want to give out shout out to Byline Bank, Evanston Commerce, and Roundtable, and a special thanks to Chris Levitino for letting us get this space. Um, I want to introduce you to not only my friend, but my brother, Austin Brown. Um, he's an uh, Evanston native, grew up here, does a lot in the community, but he's also, um, I want to call him the super agent, the, the man of the hour, the, the person that a lot of these kids look up to. So um, I'm blessed to have this space with you, bro. And um, I want to start off <laughs> kind of the first time that we met is probably fam. You were probably yeah. a fifth grader. I was probably a sixth grader. You were playing for the Blazers. Um, I was playing for the Pistons. What was the fam life like? What was being in that space? You know, obviously being a basketball player, you, you seeing these guys that you're now playing with, how, how was that? I mean, first off, that was an incredible intro, so I don't know <laughs> if I can top that, but uh, I mean, fam was everything, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, my dad has been involved in FAM for I think over 40 years. Um, my best childhood memories growing up are all from FAM, whether that's, you know, being at Fleetwood, you know, on Fridays for practice, you know, pancake day, obviously. Right. So, um, but you know, FAM sort of just epitomizes, I think what like we all are introduced to when we talk about Evanston basketball, right? From an early age and so, I mean, every Saturday morning going to that gym, it was like you felt like you were in the NBA, you know, like it was it was almost like being a kid at Christmas. You couldn't sleep on Friday night because you were just ready, ready for the matchup. Go. Right. And so for me, um, it was really unique because unlike you and some of the other guys, Scott, Nick, it's like I didn't go to Haven. I didn't go to Nichols like I went to a Catholic school, St. Joan of Arc down the street. So. I didn't know a lot of the guys from the school, but so, so FAM was really my way of meeting a lot of guys that I didn't go to school with. And so, you know, you talk about the people that you grew up with. Um, I mean, you know, I'm gonna talk about you a little bit here, but <laughs> you were, you were sort of the guy, right? Like when you talk about FAM, you talk about Evanston legends, period. Stacy Moraney is a name that always comes up. And so anytime, you know, I was watching, you know, before if we weren't playing you guys, I was always watching you. I was watching Scott Horn. And so those fam days are just some of my, honestly, when I think back on my life and I'm, I'm still young, but those are some of the most monumental, like important days of my life because it was just so much fun and the community was so behind Absolutely. the league, right? Like it was literally like you, you felt like you were in the spotlight and it's sort of similar to the gym that we're in now, right? Beardsley, it's like playing here, you equate that to playing, you know, at Cameron or, you know, at the United Center, like you just felt like you were in the center of the universe. So those fam days meant, meant everything to me and, you know, guys that, you know, our best friends like you, Nikas, like th those are guys that I've met on those gym floors, so Absolutely. super, I mean, I always have a smile on my face anytime I think that's, about fam. That, that's dope because I always go back to us in high school and like when I was able to be at your house, I seen how your mom and your dad, is that people that you got installed, your, your morals and how you represent yourself is probably your mom and your dad and probably some coaches that you had. Can you um, elaborate on I mean, that? 100%, I mean, my parents are, literally the reason why I'm, I'm me and I'm able to do the things that I'm able to do, right? And so from a young age, you know, they taught me what it meant to work hard, to be respectful and to give back, right? And so, you know, my dad, as you know, you know, he owned his own company, um, worked like crazy. I got my work Absolutely. ethic from my dad, but I never felt like he was gone, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? He always, you know, he, coached, he was at every single one of my practices, was always there Saturday morning to coach and, you know, I always found it really unique when I was a kid, you know, after those Friday practices at Fleetwood, we usually always had somebody coming over, you know, Absolutely. you know, for pizza on Friday night, sleeping over and donuts, donuts, right? <laughs> donut. yeah, you, you, too many that you should have had, you shouldn't have had, but, uh, you know, but I, I, when I was younger, I didn't understand necessarily all the time why, you know, he would actually go out and say, hey, come over, hey, come have dinner. And what I realized is that he was giving back, you know, there were, 
kids growing up in the Evanston community that didn't have a lot of the things that I had. They didn't have two parents at home. They didn't sometimes know like where their next meal was going to come from. So my dad and my mom made sure that, you know, anybody was in our house, you know, had what they needed. And so for me, you know, now that I'm older, I understand how important that was. And I think, again, just those lessons that you try to carry on, you know, a lot of us say like, man, you don't want to become your parents. And then you wake up and you realize you have way more traits than you ever realized that your parents sort of have too. Absolutely. For me, I've always wanted to be like my parents. You know, like I said, my dad's my hero. My mom's my hero. My mom's, as you know, like the, the nicest person on the face of the earth would do, <laughs> would, would, do would do anything. Yes. But, you know, they, they all are very, they understand what it takes to be great and you know my mom had her own career as well um, but again she was always at the house for me and my sister took my sister to her swim meets me to my basketball game so in talking about what I do now like again I wouldn't even be able to be in the position that I'm in if I didn't have my parents who were really there to instill those values in me and teach me what it meant not only to you know work hard but also you know academically you know get it together oh, and like yeah. that was a big thing particularly for both my parents because basketball was great but you know that couldn't be everything like you had to have the schoolwork first and you I'm sure you remember those speeches that my dad oh, had man. saying you know hey those guys that you're playing with fam right now you know some of those guys are really really good some of those guys are better than you but you're not going to see them playing, you know, in high school because they won't have the grades. And again, like clockwork, I mean, it, it literally, there were some great guys, some great talent that we had when we were younger that weren't able to play on this court like you and I, just because the academic part wasn't together. So those values have still, you know, stuck with me. And I try to, you know, when I come back here and talk to other kids, like, you know, basketball is great, but it's only a tool and you Absolutely. have to be able to use it, you know, along with the academic piece also. Yep. And, and so you went to St. Joan of Arc. I know that you had to make a decision either Loyola and Evanston. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you chose Evanston. Well, Obviously, well, you well, think. Wait, I, wait, wait. So my dad, <laughs> my dad chose Evanston, okay. and I and I think literally every day I'm so happy that he did that. Yeah. So you know, my dad was a public school product, yep. and you know, he was like, look, he he got the private school, like, yeah. but he's going to Evanston. And for me, you know, my graduating class in eighth grade was like maybe 11 people you know and one and one of those people was my twin sister yep. and so i went from that to evanston with over four thousand kids in it so for me it was i had the best time of my life here like i mean you know some people talk about their college experiences and that's where they met all their best friends and I, i've met some great people in college but my best friends, my brothers like you, the other friends that I have like are all from here. And Absolutely. so I, I think I, I don't, you know, I'm so appreciative of both my parents, but my dad was, he was very, very, he made no sort of, you know, if, ands or buts about it. Like he was going to Evanston and he understood that that's what was be best for me and my sister. So I, I thank him for it, you know, Absolutely. every day. So we're sitting in Beersley and I'm just thinking about Coach Primer, like this was the spot where we'll do Apaches and, and get on the line. And you weren't the the guy that everyone noticed at first. Mm -hmm. But even I, when I was a senior, like you kind of, we both were lefties. We kind of like, we hung out a lot and I seen your, your talent like grow, like you, you continue growing. Tell me what this gym means to you, this like, just sitting in here gives me goosebumps. Yeah. Like, I, I'm blessed to be able to coach here, but you're outside looking in and, like, what did this mean? What did Coach Prime mean to you? What did your teammates mean to you? Because I didn't get the chance to go downstate. And yeah. I remember I vividly, you like, yo, I, this is not how you going out. I remember yeah. Yeah. you telling me that my senior year and when the season was over, when I was in the locker room, you, you, you told us, yo, we got you. And yeah. got, got downstate. What does that mean? What does this E mean to you? Yeah, and I mean, again, just like fam, you know, this, this means everything. I think, uh, you know, I remember when I made the freshman A team, you know, and I was telling like some people in my neighborhood and they were like, oh, you're playing freshman A for Evanston? Mm -hmm. Like it meant something, you know what I mean? And so when you talk about this gym, I mean, uh, so many memories here, right? Like whether it's the new Trier games or, you know, whether it's like you said, running suicides, Apache, you know, like those dog fights we used to do, you know, like Coach Prime, you know, he, he would let us, we'd have those games where he wouldn't call fouls, yes. right? And so we had some, we had some real, some real battles here. But I think, again, you know, this is to me, 
the best gym in America. And, you know, it's funny, you know, I came here a couple weeks ago yeah. with one of my clients, Jaron Jackson Jr. on the Grizzlies, and he was so enamored with just the atmosphere here. And what's crazy is that, you know, it wasn't allowed to be sort of like what we are used to because of, you know, COVID mm -hmm. and all that, but he still felt that. And he, he called me the next day and said, man, I'm so happy you took me there. Yeah. Like it was just, he just felt it, right? And so for me, those are the really proud moments because obviously you and I are gonna feel the way we feel about Beardsley, but to bring somebody else from the outside who can then experience that and have that same sort of feeling just from being here from one game, I think that's just the epitome of what it means to sort of be in this gym. And, you know, there's so many great players that have come through this place, you yep. know, um, you know, you know, one of them, you know, Walt Perrin, you know, who, you know, yeah. you know, I know really well. And it's crazy because in the work that I do now, you know, Walt is, you know, the assistant GM of the Knicks, but Walt walked these same halls and came through this gym as well. So just the lineage of people that have been here and, you know, the continued excellence, right, of what has happened. Like, I remember that game you were talking about, <laughs> my junior year, your senior year, and I said, you, like, you can't go out like yeah, this, yeah. right? But, and as sad as it was for you and for me to see you and Nikas and, you know, those guys go out like that, immediately it was like, I got you, right? Yeah. And so there's not a day that goes by, I'm sure that you don't think about that game. For sure. There's not a day that doesn't go by that I don't think about our state semifinal game, you know, where we lost, right? And so you always want those moments back, but what I remember the most, especially from my senior year in that downstate run was, you know, the whole community was just behind us. Like they rallied, I mean, it was like everywhere we went. I mean, we felt felt like rock stars and yeah. it was, we, we felt legitimately like we weren't just doing it for us, like we were doing it for the city, right? Mm -hmm. And. I think when you're on teams like that, you've been a part of them too, where it's just, you have like a special moment where it's not about like the individual accolades, it's about like we're a real team, right? And we enjoyed each other, you know? Coach Bost, I mean, rest in peace, like he, he was so instrumental to that run that we had our senior year. I mean, he gave some of the, the best <laughs> pregame speeches. Absolutely. I'm, I'm see, like literally till this day that like I think about him and they give me chills, you know? What people don't know, you know, we mentioned Chris Levitino earlier, but his brother, Tom, you know, he's been my coach slash gym teacher since I was in kindergarten. Yep. So he was my gym teacher at St. Joan of Arc. What's crazy is that I never really fully got to play for him because he left St. Joan of Arc before I became, you know, uh, in junior high. Yep. And I always wanted to play for him. He was like my favorite gym teacher, one of my favorite coaches. Full circle moment, my senior year, he comes on as a special assistant at Evanston. So we got to have that special, you know, bond and reunion. So all of those moments just came to a head my senior year. But, you know, th this gym is everything to me. And, you know, I, I have all these moments when I see these young guys play here now, I, I still, like, I wish I could just get back out here one more time, right? Mm -hmm. But it's just the, the allure and just like the history and the nostalgia, it, it never escapes you, man. It's just a totally, totally special place. So you went to DePaul in Indiana, you played basketball there and then you moved on to be a lawyer. To, you went to New York. Investment was, banker first at <laughs> J.P. Morgan, for, yeah. Yes, yeah, and then yeah. you were Law like, what, what was that like? What, what made you say, yo, I wanna be an agent? Like, I, I just, like, one, obviously, you wanna still be in the game because mm -hmm. that's what you know. You're, you're great at what you do. Right. So what made you say, you know what? this is what I'm going to go for. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, it's always funny when I think about it, because I think if you ask 10 different agents how they got into the business, you'll get 10 completely different stories, right? Mm -hmm. And so for me, my dad, like I said, was in finance his whole life, so I just assumed that that's what I was going to do. And so, you know, I had a couple of very, very low level offers to play overseas before I graduated, nothing like what you did. <laughs> but um, when I got my job at JP Morgan, I just said, okay, this is sort of what I'm going to do. And loved it. It was a really great experience. I learned so much. I started in 2007, right before the credit crisis. So really a crash course in you know, mm -hmm. the finance world. But I just always found myself wanting to stay tied to basketball, right? And the little waking moments that I had where I wasn't working, I was always just checking stuff with basketball, trying to stay in touch, you know, following you, like following Mike McKinney, who was playing overseas, right? My guy. And so um, 
I'd sort of, you know, I'd always, I remember in like kindergarten, I'd done this like roadmap of like what I wanted my life to be like. And my mom who saves everything, you know, she had it. And I think I had like three things on there that I wanted to be when I was an adult. It was an NBA player, uh, a stockbroker, because my dad was in finance yeah. and uh, it was a lawyer, right? Uh -huh. And so, because my mom said, I like to argue a lot and I'm good at talking. So, yeah. you know, fit, go figure, right? <laughs> so uh, I figured, you know, I had done the finance part the NBA part probably wasn't going to happen for me. So let me think about going to law school. And it was something that I could, you know, still be involved in the world of finance because my job, my, my idea was to be a corporate lawyer. Okay. So just to have a little bit more control of my time. And the summer before I went to law school, I had a buddy who was interning at a sports agency and he called me and just said, hey, you should try this. You'd be really good at it. And so I was like, all right, you know, this would be something cool to do before I go to law school and get my corporate life started. And it all just clicked. Like I mm. had the light bulb moment where it was like, I'll still be able to use, you know, my business background. I'll obviously be able to use a legal acumen I'm gonna attain in law school, but most importantly, I'll be able to stay tied to the sport that I love, which is basketball. And so that changed my complete, my whole, changed my whole trajectory in terms of my career. And so I did a lot of internships, you know, was knocking on doors any way I could just to get my foot in. And so one thing led to another. And, you know, now I've been fortunate enough to represent some great guys, some number one picks, you know, and um, just work with great families. And again, but most importantly, like stay tied to the sport that gave you and me, you know, everything so it's been a blessing man and er and everyone thinks that the lifestyle you have is glamorous obviously you're blessed but talk on how much time and how much you have to make sure your clients are where they need to be understand it's a it's a business and you being a former athlete you have an inside. Mm -hmm. So how, how do you explain that to them? How do you talk to them about representing not only themselves, but their family? Yeah, no, I mean, it's a great question. I think what people always see is like, oh, you hang out with athletes. And look, it's like you said, it's a blessing. Like, and so in a way, when I talked about that roadmap of what I wanted my life to be like, in a way, I feel like I did make the NBA, right? Just in a different way, in a route that I never really even planned on. But, you know, for me, it's about working with great families, great players, and helping them achieve a dream that I don't care who you were at some point when you were a kid, you envisioned, you know, being a professional athlete, celebrity in some form or fashion. You and I, you know, we're in the driveway, we're out here, three, two, one. Yep. Imagine that you're hitting in the last shot in the NBA finals. And for me to be able to go and help, you know, a young guy achieve that dream that so very few get to achieve, like I don't take that lightly. So mm -hmm. if they choose to put their career in my hands, I've got to treat it as if it was my own. So for, it's, it's really about working with the right people, right? Cause like you said, it, it's a super stressful job. People don't see all the, the other stuff that comes I with do. it, right? You do, <laughs> yeah, but you know, you know you, you, yeah. you've been around, but you know, I think that's why it's really important to work with the right kind of people, yeah. right? And so you want to make sure that the people that you work with, their character aligns with yours because there's a lot that goes into this. And so as you're going through those wakeless hours and you know, those long trips, you at least want to do it for people that you really care about and whose values align with yours. So for me, everybody that I've worked with, they've been great families, great people, and they have great character. So I've been really fortunate to just have some, some great experiences, man. I'm, I'm, like I said, it's a job, but I don't feel like it is. You know, yeah. every day I get to wake up and stay tied to basketball. So it's, it's a blessing. So um, we've been talking for a little while. Um, my last question to you is, where do you see yourself in five years? I know that I see you as a GM, a president of an NBA team, running your own NBA team. But where do you see yourself? Like, that's my vision for you. Obviously, I'm biased. You, my, you, my brother. So, I'm biased. I'm gonna continue to be biased. I'm gonna continue laying that groundwork for you to continue leveling up and what you're doing. So, uh, where do you see yourself? No, I mean, look, that's a great question. I, I get it a lot. I think you know those things that you talked about in terms of running a team that that's those are great aspirations but i think right now you know i still love what i'm doing i love working with the guys that i'm working with the families that i'm working with and i think the biggest testament to that is the fact that i still a lot of my business comes from you know current clients that i represent right so you know if a guy's not happy they'll say hey you know talk to my guy and so for me you have to take care of the guys that you have and not so much focus on you know the next guy right that's always been our adage especially at my company is take care of the people that you have and that'll lead to your business and so i've really tried to stay true to that and i think it served me well but you know i just 
you know, no matter what I do in five to ten years, I can't say exactly what that'll be, but right now, I love what I'm doing. Like, it's a job, but I don't really feel like it's a job. Every day I get to wake up, and at the end of the day, I'm still staying tied to basketball. So, for me, you know, whether that's being an agent, continuing to want to run my group, doing other things outside of that, all I do know is that I still want to stay tied to the Evanston community because I wouldn't be where I am today if it weren't for people like you, if it weren't for people like Chris Levitino or Tom Levitino or Coach Bost, right, or, you know, the Murphys, like my mom, my dad. The whole community has helped me build who I am and given me the tools to be able to help the guys that I represent now. So I literally, I carry Evanston with me everywhere I go. And it's with such pride that I have that I really, you know, to be able to talk to people about it who don't really, who haven't grown up here, and it's so funny because they say, man, like, you're still friends with, and not just friends, you're best friends with the people that you grew up with from fourth, fifth grade, high school, and, like, they're, they're shocked by it. And so you really do get an outside perspective of, like, how special this place is. It's not just a community. Like, this is, this is home, right? And Absolutely. so for me, no matter what I'm doing, I still want to stay tied to Evanston and keep giving back to the community that's given me so much because, again, I wouldn't even be able to be in this position if it weren't for the community of Evanston. So I know for sure, no matter what it is, that's what I want to do moving forward. Absolutely. Man, I want to thank you for this time, man. This is, has been fun. Once again, I want to thank um, Evanston Roundtable, Byline Bank, and the uh, Evanston Chamber of Commerce for um, letting us do this. I want to say a special thanks to Chris Levitino, our AD at Evanston, for allowing us to use this historic place to do this interview because we um, had a lot of wars in here. Absolutely. I uh, appreciate you, bro. Appreciate and, you. You know, we got, we got another 20 years of, <laughs> of having fun, brother. No doubt. Right? Appreciate you. you. Yes, sir. Awesome.